Hey everyone, William here. This is just a short video on setting up a build server for a Unity project. I just did this recently and I thought I'd take some time to talk about it while my memory is still fresh. Before I continue, I just want to say this is not a step-by-step in-depth tutorial. This is more intended as a quick introduction, why a build server is useful, what it is, some resources you'll need to get started. I didn't know about build servers until about six months ago. So I thought, you know, there might be some other newer devs who haven't come across this and might find it useful in their pipeline. Okay, what is a build server? A build server is basically just another computer you have making builds for you. Generally, you'd set it up to automate a bunch of things. In my case, every time I make a build and push it to server, push it to Perforce, the server detects it, pulls the latest files and makes a build then puts it in Dropbox and everybody who's working on the game or who has access to that Dropbox folder can download the new build. So Unity actually does provide a service to do this called Unity Cloud Build. I've been posting about setting up this build server on Twitter and everyone keeps asking me, why am I not using Cloud Build? I've heard a lot of really great things about this and it might be a great option for you. In fact, I think I would look at Cloud Build first before trying to set up your own server, your own build server. The reason why I'm not using it is one, I was having trouble getting Perforce to work with it. it. This was a while ago, but it looked like I would have to move the project over to Unity Collaborate in order to get it to work with Cloud Build. That wasn't such a big issue, but the second problem I was having or the second problem why I'm not using Cloud Build is that it currently does not support console platforms. It only supports iOS, Android, WebGL, Windows, Mac, and Linux. I thought if I'm going to take the time to set this up, I might as well do it so that I can make builds for all platforms. Now, why did I set it up? Why is a build server useful? If you're still early in your project or you have a very small project, it probably only takes you a couple of minutes to make a build and you might not be making builds that frequently. You might be thinking, okay, this is a simple process. Why does it need to be automated? Well, in my case, Manifold Garden has been in development for over five years. The project is massive. We've got about 186 scenes. Every time I wanna make a build, it takes about 40 minutes. First, I have to create an optimized version of every scene. This is a step that is specific to Manifold Garden, and we do have a tool that does this, but I still have to click on the menu, click on that button, generate these scenes, 20 minutes, come back, you know, after this is done, like after about 20, 25 minutes to check if it's done. Sometimes it isn't, sometimes there are problems. I need to redo it. And then once that's all sorted, then I start making the build. And of course, during this entire time, I can't use Unity. For a while, this wasn't too bad. I would just make the build at the end of the day, or I'd start this process and go out to get a cup of coffee. But as we're getting closer to launch, we're making builds frequently to check new features. And I can't go get 10 cups of coffee a day. We're also making builds for multiple platforms. So anyway, I heard some people talking about uh, build server and I asked them what, what it was and they explained it to me and I was like, well, this sounds uh, incredibly useful. So took the time this past week and set it up. It only took about two days, mostly what, the, the, the thing that was the most time consuming was just running each test and making sure that the build worked. And the iteration cycle, as I said before, it takes about 30, 40 minutes to make a build, that meant I, that was how long the iteration cycle took, right? If I screwed up something and I want to change something else and see if that worked, I'd have to come back in about 30, 40 minutes to see if it resolved the issue. All right, so things that you'll need first is Jenkins. Well, you got to have a spare computer. I have a Windows machine that I use primarily for VR. 
So it's mostly just sitting around. Uh, I've installed Jenkins on that. It's got Unity, Perforce, that's the version control we're using. Some people ask, somebody asked me about how much power you need. You don't even need to, the way you're doing this, it doesn't even open up Unity. So I think you could do it without a graphics card, but I am not 100% sure about that. That machine's got a 1060, but that is more than necessary. Okay, so first you wanna install Jenkins. If you're using, and it, this supports multiple version control uh, programs. If you're using Perforce like me, you're gonna to need to get the Perforce plugin. Uh, this is actually the old one, so there's a new one here. And what you do is once you get Jenkins installed, you can select Perforce, put in all the information, username, password, where your Perforce server is. And what I have it set up is pull SCM. So every 20 or 50 minutes, it checks the Perforce server to detect if there's been a change. And if there has been a change, then it gets the latest files and makes a build. There is also another, I did not install this, but some of you might find this useful called Igor. My friend Mike wrote this and some of the other Chicago devs have set this up. But this is something that you can use with Jenkins. And what I've heard that is really nice about this is it actually will print out the debug log from Unity out into Jenkins. So you can actually see if something fails, you can see where it failed. Okay, so you get Jenkins, you get your Perforce plugin. Oh, right. You'll need to learn to use Unity command line. This isn't too difficult. It's pretty straightforward. For those of you who don't know what command line is, it's basically a way of interacting with your computer without the visuals, right? So you can like access folders and run programs just via text. Uh, so in this case, let me see here, there is, you know, if you wanna, you can launch Unity from this. Now you do wanna put your Unity folder. I have like 20 versions of Unity on my computer, so in my case, that's Unity 5.6.4 P4, and then there's a bunch of other commands. So you can actually make a build. You can open up Unity, open up the project, make a build for Windows or whatever platform just from command line. So let me show you in this case, right? I did this a little earlier. So we've got the lines I typed in. So you can see C program files, Unity 5.6.4 P4, editor, Unity.exe. I'm gonna Right now, Unity is closed. I'm gonna hit enter and we should see Unity open up. There you go. Okay, and behind here, I've got a batch script. Basically, this is a way to run a bunch of these commands in one script. And I have some problem with my computer here. But, uh, <laughs> okay, let's close that. So I can actually run this. Well, here's, here we'll try another one. This is goes, um, you can do project path. So this is gonna open up Unity and open up a specific project, which is here, perforce relativity redux. Relativity was the old name of Manful Garden. The, I haven't changed the name of the folder. And now we should see this open up Unity and it's gonna open up the project. Uh, all right, and you can see this, this batch script actually just does the same thing. Now, the important thing you will, the most useful command here is actually execute method. And what this does is it'll, as soon as Unity is started, as soon as they open up the project, it'll actually run this method. And this method is in a C-sharp script. And the reason why, so where do I have it? Oh, automated build process, right. So in my case, it'll run this uh, this static method, start build, automated build process, start build. See what it does, I'll comment this out, but basically first we create an optimized 
versions, create optimized versions of all the scenes enabled in the build settings. And so you can run you know, methods in your game this way. And we also create a directory. It's got Manful Garden and then the time at which this is called. And then it puts the it puts the build inside of that directory. I, I haven't figured out how to compress the folder. There's um, a couple of options, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna do that eventually. But the important thing is you can use a static method and call that from your batch script. So we're gonna eventually, you know, modify this method to include a couple of other builds or or different uh, add various details like I think instead of using the time I want to use the version number anyway I think that's everything I wanted to cover let's see other questions oh somebody asked about what kind of network considerations you need to make I think none. You there is a way where you can trigger it to build remotely, and there you need to set up a domain name. But I didn't bother doing that. I just had him. I just had Jenkins. I just have Jenkins pulling the Perfor server regularly to check for updates. Right, and once it's done, it puts a build in the Dropbox, and I share that Dropbox with everybody that's working on the game or who I want to get a build. Okay, I think that's it. I'm not an expert on this. This is just something that I went through recently and I thought I'd talk a bit about it for those of you who've never done this, you know, just plant an idea in your head. I think this is something that could really help your, uh, your work pipeline. I know for me, it's gonna save me a ton of time because this way actually nobody that's working on the game needs to make a build. They just need to push to change the perforce and then go check the Dropbox folder. And during this whole time, they can still continue to work in Unity. Okay, if you have any suggestions or questions, just leave it in the comments below. I'll probably make another follow-up video once I have more information or once I know more about this. There's like a couple of little things that's specific to working with Perforce, um, but I'll leave those for another video, another day. All right, that's it for now. It's December 31st, 2017. Um, for those of you watching in the year 2017, have an excellent 2018. See you all next time. See you all in the new year. <laughs>